solving horizontal projectile problems. This short video should assist you in answering questions about projectiles that are fired horizontally, meaning that those projectiles will have only an X component to their initial velocity and no Y component because projectiles uh, fired horizontally will just go perpendicular to wherever they're being fired from, like you see in the diagram here. So the example problem that I'm going to work through with you says a cannonball is fired from a cliff that is 30.0 meters high. The cannonball lands 50.0 meters away from the base of the cliff. What was the initial velocity of the cannonball? So if you notice some of the vectors that I put up here, or one of the vectors I put up here, the initial velocity in the x direction is what I'm trying to solve for. The initial velocity in the y direction does not exist because, once again, that projectile was fired straight away from the cannonball or the cannon. And also, I could say that the initial velocity in the x direction will be the same all throughout its flight because gravity works vertically. Gravity does not work horizontally. So all of these initial velocities in the x directions will never change. Otherwise, I can say the initial velocity in the x direction is going to be the final velocity in the x direction. And again, because gravity only works up and down. So let's take a look at the variables that I know for this particular problem. What I do know is I do know the height of the cliff, and the height of the cliff is 30.0 meters. I'm going back and labeling that here. This distance here is the change in y. And notice that I'm using y now to signify displacement that is vertical. And that's going to be the 30.0 meters. I also have my range, or my change in horizontal displacement, and that's going to be 50.0 meters. So I know my range is 50.0 meters. I do know that I am on the planet Earth. I'm assuming I'm on planet Earth when I shoot this horizontal projectile. So gravity is going to be negative 9.8. And like I just mentioned, the initial velocity in the y direction is going to be zero because it, once again, that projectile is shot straight out from the cannon with no y component. So there is a key factor missing here. And the key factor is how long is it going to take that projectile to hit the ground? And however far it takes, however long it takes for that projectile to fall, it's going to be the same length of time it takes for that projectile to move 50 meters or move its range 50 meters. So if I can figure out how to tie together how long it takes the projectile to fall with how long it takes for the projectile to go its 50 meters, I can figure out the initial velocity of the cannonball. So I'm going to pull out of my hat, the fourth UEOM, and this time I'm going to rewrite it, though, in terms of the Y displacement. I know that this term here can cancel because I know I have no initial velocity in the Y direction. And now I can rearrange that equation to solve for time, and this will turn into another equation that looks somewhat familiar, where t, or the time it takes for that projectile to fall, is equal to the square root of 2 times the y displacement divided by gravity. Now let's take a look at the equation we know for horizontal velocity. Now, since we know that the horizontal velocity is constant and it will never change, I can use the equation 
delta x over t. And I can use the equation for constant velocity because the velocity in the x direction is not going to change. So now what I can go ahead and do is realize that I have two variables in common, time here and time here. And I'm going to substitute this first time equation into the constant velocity equation. And that's going to allow me to solve for the initial velocity in the x direction. So it's going to turn into delta x over g delta y over g. This is going to be the same thing as saying delta x times the square root of g over to delta y. And now I have made an equation where all I have to do is substitute in my measurements. So to do this, I say delta x is going to be 50, 50.0 times square root of negative 9.8 divided by 2 times, now I've got to make sure I remember that this projectile is falling downwards, therefore the y displacement is going to be negative 30. And when I plug this into my calculator and solve, I say 50 times the square root, and by the way, I can put this in my calculator all in one step, and then I don't have to round to correct significant figures until the very end. Negative 9.8 divided by negative 60, because 2 times negative 30 is negative 60. And with my three significant figures, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, I get 20.2 meters per second. So that is how simple it is to solve horizontal projectile problems. All you have to do is realize the time it takes for that projectile to fall is the same amount of time it takes for the projectile to travel its particular range. Mesh the two equations together and you should be able to solve for whatever variable the question is asking you for. You should be ready now to do page 99, numbers 1 through 4, and I will be around to render assistance as needed. Good luck. <laughs>